Welcome back everybody! Today we are going to find out why did Denmark gain land after World War I despite being neutral? I didn't even know that Germany gave some land to Denmark after World War I. Hmm? So I want to find out which parts and why. This video got 1.4 million views. So a lot of people were also interested in this topic. And you clicked on this video so you also are. Let's watch it. In the wake of the First World War, Denmark was given this territory at Germany's expense. Which is interesting because during the war, Denmark didn't do anything. It maintained its neutrality throughout the entirety of the conflict and never so much as fired a shot in anger. And given that generally speaking, territorial gains in warfare are for nations that, you know, took part, it seems a bit odd. So what gives? Why did Denmark gain territory despite being neutral? So, in order to understand why Denmark received these lands in 1920, we have to go back to the mid-19th century. At this time, King Frederick VII of Denmark was also the Duke of Schleswig, Holstein and Lauenburg, which the further south you went became less Danish and more German. Frederick mm. was childless and he did the only thing that childless kings aren't supposed to do. He died. This led to a succession crisis in the duchies and Frederick's successor, Christian IX, passed a new constitution which began the slow process of unifying the duchies with Denmark proper. This upset the Prussians and Austrians since they, alongside Lauenburg and Holstein, were part of the German Confederation. And neither wanted to see two members ripped away, leaving them with only one option. Discussion. With each other. About how they were going to crush Denmark in a war. Long story short, Denmark lost and Prussia and Austria took these lands. Austria mm. had previously agreed to hold a referendum about the Danish majority areas joining Denmark, but it never got to do that. This was because Prussia soon went to war with Austria, taking its previous gains from Denmark before going on to form Germany five years later. Soon, World War I and German defeat. So how did Denmark get these lands? Well, during the war, Denmark had maintained its neutrality whilst trying to appease some German demands since they really didn't feel like getting invaded. The Entente didn't mind this since a neutral Denmark was more useful than a Danish front being opened. That said, the Entente powers, specifically France, wanted to give Denmark sizable territorial concessions after the war. Officially, this was because of their commitment to self-determination. The actual reason was because they wanted to make sure that Germany could never wage war on such a scale ever again. In fact, after the war was won, the Entente's desire to punish Germany caused tensions with Denmark. Danish delegates arrived at the Versailles Conference to ask for these lands, the ones which Austria had promised a referendum on 50 years prior. This upset Britain and France, who pushed Denmark to take more. The British government demanded that Denmark take all of Schleswig, whereas France what? wanted... What? The British demanded Denmark to take more? What? Why? ...years prior. This upset Britain and France, who pushed wait, the wait, Versailles wait, wait, Conference wait. to ask for these lands, the ones which Austria had promised a referendum <clears> on 50 <throat> years prior. This upset Britain and France, who pushed Denmark to take more. The British government demanded that Denmark take all of Schleswig, whereas France wanted the Danish border to stop here at the Kiel Canal. As you can guess, this had absolutely nothing to do with what Denmark wanted or needed. Instead, it was to make sure that any future war against Germany would be easier. The Danish government refused to annex these lands. <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. In all those videos about history in Germany after the war and the countries around it, they're always thinking how to prevent Germany to do this again every time. So they're already thinking like Germany is doing it again in the future. How do we get in a better position? And that's crazy. Plans because the vast majority of the people who lived there were German and thus it thought that it would only cause issues down the road with the new Germany. There was a lot of pressure on Denmark to take these extra lands and it was only after the Americans intervened on Denmark's behalf that Britain and France backed down. In the end it was agreed that these two areas would hold referenda on joining Denmark. Northern Schleswig agreed to join Denmark with 3 to 1 voting for union and central Schleswig voted overwhelmingly to stay with Germany. And so with the voting done Denmark annexed northern Schleswig later on in 1920 giving Denmark its current borders with Germany much to the annoyance of France and Britain. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you. <laughs> All right. Very interesting. I had no idea about any of this. That is still ridiculous that a third country wants to make Denmark take more Germany. This was after World War I and all those countries were already like thinking of how can we make Germany not invade us again or at least make it harder for them. So they already knew that it was gonna happen again, like it, or it was likely to happen. Why would they think that? That makes no sense. Unless they were already like thinking, oh, we're gonna punish Germany so hard that it will hate us and they will invade us again. Which is basically what happened, right? After World War One, Germany got punished too hard 
and then the Führer had the reason to go to power and uh, did what he did. Yeah, so they tried too hard to to push Germany down, I guess, or they didn't try hard enough. Yeah, either one. Um, but very interesting. If you enjoyed this video, go subscribe to History Matters and see what other kind of videos they have. Very good animation explanation. And thanks for doing this. With that said, see you guys tomorrow.